Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this session, we are going to learn about slow running queries due to memory weights in SQL Server. We will learn what is memory weight and how and why it occurs and I will show you how to troubleshoot this type of issues when you face them. Let's get started. You detected slow running query in your server. What you should do? The first step to troubleshoot slow running query is to identify whether query is spending time on CPU or waiting for other resources. If we find query is spending time on waiting rather than running on CPU, the next step should be to find what type of weight it is. There are several types of weights. As you can see, main weight types are log, memory weight, and also IO weight, network weight, ledge weight, scheduler yield weight. I'm going to create videos for each type of this video and weights explaining what is this weight and how does it happen and how to troubleshoot them, okay? But what if we find the query is running long because it's spending a lot of time on CPU? In this case, there are two points we should check. Is it query running because of long query plan compilation or is the query taking so much time for execution? Maybe we need to improve our query. About these two points also, I'm going to make a detailed video. In this video, let's concentrate on slow performance due to memory weight. Let me explain how memory weight happens in SQL Server and causes slow query performance. When a user connects to SQL Server, a session is created for this user and 2 MB is allocated by SQL Server for this session. We know that. Then, when this user passes a query in the session, a query plan for this query is compiled in Optimizer. And SQL Server uses a certain amount of memory to compile this plan. The lifetime of this usage is typically short because Optimizer releases memory as soon as optimal plan is found. If the Optimizer finds operations like join, order by, group by in the query which you submitted, it may add hash or sort operations in the query plan. We know that hash and sort operations require temporary storage for storing temporary raw data. Therefore, SQL Server should grant memory to this query, right? We call this as execution memory or memory grant. One point is important here, degree of parallelism, which I also want to mention. This is also set by optimizer while generating a query plan. If your query is run parallelly by n workers, the query would need n times more required memory because each worker works independently and each require a memory independently. Okay. Okay. After defining parallelism and how much query is needed, SQL Server contacts object called semaphore for memory grant. After memory grant, query is executed on n schedulers. You can check query plan to see how much memory is being used for your compile and execution. So, where the memory issue might happen? If memory contention exists and memory cannot be granted to query by semaphore, query is put in waiting queue and wait type resource semaphore is recorded. As a result, your query takes longer to complete and you face performance issue. In this session, we will troubleshoot this kind of semaphore-related memory wait type. To produce memory contention issue, firstly, I decrease the memory limit SQL Server can use to 1,500 megabyte. Then I go to another client server and by using RML utilities, I create 200 simultaneous requests against SQL Server. Now we produce memory contention. Let's troubleshoot the issue as if we don't know what is happening. Suppose you sense that your query is taking a lot of time to complete. You don't know what is happening. You might face an error like this, but your query might 
also run indefinitely depending on the server settings, since the thread might be put in the waiting queue indefinitely. So, what is the first step? The first step, as we know, to find whether our query is running on CPU or waiting for any resource. For this, we run this command. As you can see, there are two types of weights async network IO weight and resource semaphore weight. What is this async network IO? Suppose client is making 200 requests at the same time. When SQL Server receives this request, it allocates memory to some of these initial requests, okay, and runs the query and puts the result set to the output buffer. Then the client should fetch and acknowledge these results, right? If the client is busy and does not fetch the result and acknowledge fast enough, SQL Server waits and does not end session. And as a result, it does not release memory. It just waits by assigning these sessions a sync network IO wait type. In the meantime, since there is not available memory, other sessions are put in memory wait queue with resource semaphore wait type. So next question. Why client is not fetching the result from the output buffer, right? And not acknowledging. If client would acknowledge, these initial sessions would be released and other sessions would get memory, right? The reason is client itself is also busy with other sessions which were put in memory wait queue. Did you sense this? Did you sense that this is the log problem? Server and client are waiting each other. The root cause is of course memory contention. If SQL Server would allocate enough memory to each query execution, no session would be put in memory wait queue and then client would be able to fetch and acknowledge the results from SQL Server on time. In our case also, the same scenario is happening. Initial session, sessions are in async network IO wait and other sessions are in resource semaphore wait. So you detected and identified memory related wait types, right? Next step is to find how much memory has been granted to each session and what is overall grant. For this, we run this query. As you can see, SQL Server grant memory already to uh, 120, ah, sorry, 23 sessions, right? And uh, 175 sessions are in the memory wait queue. These 23 are all async network IO wait sessions, while rem remaining 175 is resource semaphore. Next one is to find how much memory each session is getting. And for this, we run this query. We can see that each query is taking on average 41 megabyte memory. Sessions which did not get memory is with null values. You can also investigate query plan from here. If you are not observing the issue now, but you did, you did in the past, you can utilize this query and get memory intensive queries. You can also get past memory wait stats in system health event logs. Now we understand what type of weight we are, our query is facing and how to investigate them, how to find them, right? So next step is to resolve this issue. There are many possible causes why memory contention happens. Firstly, yes, as in our case, SQL Server is given little memory compared to the workload. Microsoft recommends therefore to give 75% of available memory to SQL Server. If you are sure you are locating enough memory to SQL Server, try to investigate query plan. Is your query using a lot of memory? If so, try to investigate why. Your query might be using join source excessively. Maybe you can make your query much simpler and much faster. Also, you should always keep statistics up to date and create indexes, if possible, to avoid hash joins and, a and help merge joins. 
Furthermore, you can try to avoid unnecessary order by clauses. Excessive parallelism can also lead to increased memory usage as threads use memory independently. Okay, so try to check also degree of parallelism and uh, what is a degree is a query plan. Finally, when you upgrade SQL Server from 2014 to 2019 or 17, your query will implement new features like batch mode on raw store or memory grant feedback. These features give you CPU efficiency in the cost of increased memory. Therefore, you should be aware of this and check these properties are available or not in the new versions of SQL Server. If so, you should check whether you are facing increased memory usage because of these features, right? I want to show you one example of this. I created a test storage procedure where I'm running certain join order by and some other operations. I run this storage procedure. As you can see, we are getting 78,000 kilobyte execution memory for this. We can confirm the usage of batch mode also here. Afterwards, by using option, I disallow batch mode in storage procedure and rerun it. As you can see, the memory usage decreased significantly when we disallowed batch mode feature. You should be aware of this kind of new memory intensive features in SQL Server. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to talk about performance issue due to slow IO subsystem. Do not forget to subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.